Hello and welcome to Huck TV. We're doing the tutorial 101 series. We'll do episode 2 in this session. So getting straight into it, uh, I want to talk about controlling advantages in this series. So um, this is aimed at anyone who plays maybe in the ranked uh, mode on Counter-Strike and wants to rank up. So they want to find themselves playing at the higher levels. Um, just one thing, my thoughts on this new ranking system it's made um, playing competitive Counter-Strike a lot more accessible to everyone. Back in the day we used to have to use MIRC to find wars or pugs even, so we would have to find teams to play and teams would often be a little bit more organized than five people playing randomly together. Um, you'd find they'd have set strats if they were at least a little bit serious uh, and you'd find that a lot of the people in those teams would practice on their own game. So what you have now is you've got just imagine the whole player pool playing, um, queuing up to play competitive mode, and essentially, you've just basically got an el another element to the game: the ability to work with other people and all types of people on teams and get the best results out of them is more important in this ranked matchmaking, as well as the fact that you can't rely on other people as much in ranked matchmaking to um, live up to your expectations of how the game should be played or how. Um, you know what you would do in these situations so it's a lot more individual um, and I think ideally you just need to be a much better player to have more of an impact in the game that's probably the easiest way to rank up um, having impact in a game is not something that you can just put down to one particular skill like aim for example um, you do need to be a well-rounded player and there are a lot of different skill sets which you actually need to focus on individually um, to get a good balance Alright, so we'll get into controlling advantages. What do I mean by that? I'll load up a server and we'll show you. Now, Nuke is a good map to use because Nuke is a map where it's kind of unfair. So if you do have an advantage, you want to exploit that. And by exploit that, that means reading the play, um, figuring out where their players are playing from. And if you think about back to my last video, I talked about percentage plays. So how can we apply our knowledge of percentage plays to controlling advantages? I'll show you a couple of ways in which we can do that. So let's join the terrorist side. We'll give ourselves a gun and just make it a little bit more let's go. realistic. Alright, that's pretty cool. So I've got some binds where I can give myself some... I can give myself some nades. I've got to hear a smoke and crush in the nade. That's pretty much everything we need to do for now. So. Let's imagine that there are um, five people on each team and we're playing in a competitive competitive match, one that's serious enough that you want to win, whether it's to rank up or it could be like a LAN um, game, you could be playing for pride or you could be playing for results in a league. Either way, you want to know how to control your advantages because when you do get them, you want to keep them and when you're not playing from an advantageous position, you want to be able to know both sides of it and so you want to know what you can do to turn the round to your advantage. So, I'll give you an example just very, very quickly. Let's say that we've got five men alive here on Terror of the Site Nuke. As it stands from the start of the round, if it's five versus five and it's a fairly standard round, like nothing funky happening, then it, it's pretty standard that it'll be a CT sided round. Uh, reasons for that are pretty obvious. It's just so easy to hold um, small choke points from many different angles. Uh, so you don't have to be looking in many different angles to cover it. Uh, as an entry fragger from source, it's, and anyone else will know, it's quite easy to, to know that it's a lot harder to come out and check everything at the same time than it will be for them to be able to see you in the same time. So um, that's why it is a CT sided map, they just generally have the advantage. That's not to say that you can't win rounds on um, terrors by making plays that are not to your advantage, but I'll just show you the way in which I, um, the way in which I would generally um, get certain advantages. So I know it's like a very textbook thing, but if a lot of people will come and do this, and they'll just like step here and just wait for the head, and I'll I'll take the shot. Now your advantage might be as simple as the fact that you just tagged him for. Um, maybe you tagged him for an unknown amount, it could be anywhere from 20 damage to 80 damage depending on what happened, but generally it's a lot less than you think it is when you think you smashed someone through a wall, so um, we'll just say that you kill them, 
Okay, there we have the headshot. Now, how to think of controlling your advantage from a pro professional player's point of view. you got to remember that right now in the round there's four alive on CT, there's five alive on terrorists. So, to exploit that, let's look at it from the counter-terrorist position. If they've originally played two in topside, maybe they've played um, one outside, and they might have played two ramps. So that one of them can be the rotator to top site when you get that kill, uh, which happens a lot. And then another one ramps just to hold ramps. But you've got this person here. Counter terrorists win. Side. What has to happen when you get that advantage on the terrorist side? It doesn't necessarily mean you've won the round, but you can definitely increase your chances of improving come on, come on, let's go. based on what decisions you make after that. Now your decisions from that point will be largely dependent on your experience and ability to read the game and read the other players. So if you've been noticing that they've been playing two top side, one outside, maybe two outside and one ramps, then it's safe to say that there might only be one person top. It's also safe to say that they'll definitely be rotating or looking to push other parts of the map if they have the chance. So you've got the decision here to push um, into top site against one person if you have a teammate that can either revenge or um, bait you for the kill but ideally you want to be able to run in and kill the other person so let's create a situation here where I do this and I see a nade come from this direction Grenade. like that and let's say it, it doesn't quite clip me it's just sort of like <laughs> what I can deduce is that the other person is just running along um, up here and I don't know exactly where he is, but we'll give him a range that he could be anywhere from here, running in that direction, drop down in that direction. He could be, by the time I actually execute a take on top side, he could all he could be all the way along the rafter, anywhere here in the side. So I know it doesn't make much of a difference, but really you've only got two places to look. So you might cross that if he shoots your feet, you know he's right there, and then you've just got a simple way to find it. And the advantage is there are kind of cancelled out because you're just doing a simple peek although I will say that the CT still have the advantage in that position um, so let's say that you decide okay I got the kill let's just let's exploit that even more um, you might just decide all right I'm drawing your flashbang all right here's the, here's the other kill Smoke. they're gonna rotate from here I can get the bomb down I'm planting the bomb I think that that smoke went down the ladder the bomb has been so you can get the bomb down now um, you might have someone coming in annex around about this time. You'll definitely have that person coming up the ladder from ramps. Um, and at this point in the round, you, you've capitalized on an advantage that you got earlier in the round by singling off the other person in that area. And during that process, you're also staying ahead of your opponent because you're anticipating what they need to do in this situation to respond. So you might decide that it's not best to be looking right at the ladder. You may have smoked it, a teammate smoked it. You should have definitely smoked it if you haven't, um, or at least smoked off the annex so that it gives your team a chance to set up in good positions. So what we've done here effectively is we've gone from a 5v4 into a... It is going to explode! Hypothetically. And at this point, it's terrorists it's win. Say, well, now the round's over, yeah. But once you've got the bomb down and it's a 5v3, it's fairly safe to say that you're in the best position to win the round because it, it does favor you having move it, move it. numbers up and the bomb down. Having the bomb down on the terrorist side gives you a automatic advantage in a sense that you're not playing against the clock anymore, they are, and you're also defending. So it's a little bit like a role reversal in an interesting way. Now, um, there, I'll try and do some other examples as well. So that's just the T side one. Um, let's say we do one outside. I'll just go through it really quickly. Say so someone gets a kill here. Um, and you know they've been playing one up heaven, one in one, or two top side and one and two ramps and one outside. So you kill the guy outside. They've got two in top side. They've got two ramps. One one would definitely be on the way from ramps just to try and get a, a kill or get some information off because you might just be going all the way under. Um, you could expect someone to pop out up there or anywhere else. You could you could even expect for them to be two uh, outside really quickly, as in someone will rotate from there and someone will come from annex. So you do have decisions to make, but how do we control advantages in that situation? Well, you've got the entry frag, so it opens up other parts of the map. If you haven't seen anyone, you can get yourself in a bet in a in a position to get more information, but also get yourself in an advantageous position to push different angles against. Um, 
the counter-terrorists. And at this point, you can exploit the advantage even further because you might find another kill by someone that's come to rotate without realizing that you're here, and you've been, a, you've been given a chance to shoot them in the side. And it's generally a free kill provided that you don't make an unforced error and that they don't pull off some godlike flick. Um, so I like my chances in that situation, and if you sort of apply that thinking to all of your rounds and all of your actions, before you think about doing something, um, you need to be able to plan out what you, what you can achieve in the round and go for the play that gives you the highest percentage of winning the round. Now, I've given you two aggressive examples where you're capitalizing on an early pick Let's say that you're on the counter-terrorist side and you do get the first pick in the round. It's great when you're on counter-terrorist and you're in a 5v4 situation. Essentially what it says is that if we keep holding, we, Let's show we're them who we are the because we were likely to win the round based on the map design in a 5v5, so it, it's definitely going to swing the odds in our favor even more. Alright, so let's say that someone just... I'll use an example I'm really familiar with. This is one of my trademark moves in Counter-Strike Source. It worked against um, all of the Australian teams that I played against, and strangely enough, they knew I was doing it, and they would put extra effort into trying to stop me from doing it. But I found that that just um, leveraged my effects even more because they weren't pressuring other parts of the map, and it was more likely I was going to kill someone that was trying to stop what I was doing. So. Even though I knew I was doing it, I'd still do it anyway and still have an impact. Overseas, it wasn't really expected as much, but against Malaysia and, um, well, that the WNV team we played in Source, um, they they were quite good at 1.6, uh, but Source, they still had some adjusting to. The map, the, the map was a little bit different, um, and also the mechanics of the game different too. But I still pushed hard, um, got the info, got kills, got random, um, got random 1Ks, and turned the round into a 5v4, so it, it may not necessarily have been a huge frag, but at that time in the round where it's a 5v5, if you're able to get the first pick in the round and do it with a relatively high chance of success, it's more often than not worth it because you're extending the advantage that you have to your team already. Um, some might argue that it's not really needed because you are in an advantage to begin with, but for reasons of um, uh, psychological reasons like um, diminishing the team's morale, it's it's bad when you're on a losing streak and then you go into a round after an eco um, knowing that you need to win that round to get your economy back on track and losing someone in the first 10 seconds of when you really can it's it's definitely um, not good for the mental state of the other team so those are the intangible values that certain moves that I make um, have to a game and I think if you start I guess um, understanding these things you can probably apply them to your own game as well so we'll say that I, get, I come up, I come down here, and more often than not, um, in source, people would get into the hut before I'd really have a chance to see them, and they would just hide in this corner here. So what I would often do is I would just quickly like check that line and use this as a chance to listen for anyone on the stairs. Uh, if they're shooting, that's great. I'll usually just like quickly go like that, and that, or maybe even just run out and like just run around and pre-fire them, and that's my easy kill. I'm back. You know, I'm back, and I'm ready for them to try and get their revenge. If they do. Um, if they do and I'm at this point, or um, I might even be at this point here, but if someone comes for the re revenge, you're more than ready for it and it just gives you the opportunity to turn it into a 5v3 situation, which happens more often than you think. So, um, how do you control the advantage once you have it on, on counter-terrorist? Well, let's go back to the terrorist and think about win. why you do have the advantage. It's because you have the numbers advantage. So. What I would recommend all players on the team doing is just taking a, a notch off their aggressiveness factor in their game. Move it, son. Changing maybe the lines that they play. So let's say if someone's playing the outside line here, they might be playing from like here. Instead of just constantly watching it, they might just step back for a bit and watch the spot line. And maybe just come out every couple of seconds. If they do have an AWP, it's a different story, but there are some lines in the game that you don't need to be watching all the time. All you need to be watching is so that you can get enough information um, to make the appropriate call to your team, so that your team can respond. It's not always about getting the kills. I see too many people playing outside, and they get in these battles that, um, more often than not, over a period of doing this in 100 rounds, you're probably not going to come out with anything better than um, one-to-one, -one, um, provided that 
you know, like I'm not saying it's a, it, it's it's like it's very individual. It depends on your skill. It also depends on them missing. But if they've got orbs and AKs and they're actually good players, it's really not hard for someone on terrorist to entry frag you from all the way over here with an AK. I, you know, the amount of times I see someone there and I, it, it's just such an easy kill to just tap on the head. At least in Source, it was a lot easier than um, the than CS:GO anyway. Um, so, just going back to that point about you've got the advantage, you've got the five v four. It's in your favor anyway. What I would do is if you're sort of coming here and this is where you got the pick, I'll definitely re relocate and I'll find a way that they they don't know that you're doing it. So I'd simply just walk back to a more passive angle. Uh, this does force them to make a decision because if they do plan on killing you. You might be low HP from that. Um, they do need to commit themselves quite heavily um, to the bomb site to really have a chance at killing you. Now they've got other decisions. They can go somewhere else in the map. They can go ramps, for example. They might have died top site, and they're just like, "All right, we keep getting owned at um, hard. Let's just try and get picks ramps." So what they might try and do is get a pick at ramps. Now the first thing they'll do is look at this line, and they'll eventually creep up and look at these lines. So playing in these positions where you, you're encountering that line is in a 5v4 or 5v3 situation when you have the advantage. It's probably not the best idea because you want to hold on to that advantage more than you want to press for getting additional kills. And the reason why is that if you die here at ramps but um, the person in top side has got the kill, you're essentially giving away the advantage that you earned earlier in the round because you gave your life away and not only that, you gave away map position, you gave away the whole ramp area. Now, that just gives them more options, and you've got less men to cover those um, those positions. And it also evens it up to a 4v4. So, at this point, I would consider, um, you might call it conceding to being a spotting role, and just sort of listening and um, listening for them to come ramps. Maybe just going for a quick shot when they come, and being able to rotate into another position counter terrorists you can win get help from your team and turn it into a fight where you've got two people looking at the same area yet again by doing something like that and taking a notch off the aggressiveness go, go, go. have the advantage um, it also means that the terrorist side has to really commit to some bomb site or some area to some degree to be able to do any more damage to you, like to do any damage to you if they attempt to even out the round by going for a kill somewhere and everyone has taken a notch off their aggressiveness factor and played those lines or positions appropriately for the situation, they'll really have to overextend or kill. And it's a bit of a do or die situation because they'll either get the kills and win the round in that situation um, or they'll just get completely shut down by the fact that you've outmaneuvered them. Alright, so that's um, episode two, controlling your advantages. Now, if you take that factor or you take this thinking into your gameplay, into your ranked gameplay when you're playing with five randoms. It doesn't help to just give them a bit of instruction and just say, hey guys, we've got the number advantage, why don't we just fall back to the sites and just hold the sites, or fall back to the, you know, play passively. You'd be surprised if you give good input and you've got a number of people on your team that are willing to, you know, work together to, to win, you'll find that some people will be inclined to, to do that. All right. Well, um, if you like what you see, just um, subscribe to the videos. I'll be doing more series like this in the future. Um, I do enjoy this kind of stuff, and I've got a lot more topics to um, to cover. So it might seem a bit random, but I think if you put it together, you'll be a much um, well well rounded player. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Just remember, first five subscribers, uh, first five new subscribers, going to win a um, Galil cheddar box, and that's going to be drawn on the 30th of April. So um, get your subscribes in, leave a comment so I know who you are or just what you'd like to see in the future. And yeah, I'll, uh, I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.